it's widely accepted the idea that uh, the typical Western style diet here in the country and in any, and any other Western civilizations um, contributes at least partially, but maybe even largely, to the development of many chronic diseases uh, of the so-called Western civilizations like hypertension, cardiovascular disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, the metabolic syndrome, and also cancer. Of course, many of those diseases are interrelated. Obesity can lead to type 2 diabetes, hypertension to cardiovascular disease, but the Western-style diet is generally believed to be a cause, at least partially, for all these chronic diseases. Now, when we talk about Western diet and what the effect is of Western diet on human health and diseases, I think it's important and interesting to understand how our diet changed over time, that the amount of total fat we eat significantly increased over the last 10,000 years, probably. And not only the amount of fat, but also the type of fat we, we eat is, is much different. Now, more recently, after the Industrial Revolution, there is a sharp and sudden increase in the amount of trans fatty acids we ate. That, that is a byproduct of, of modern food techno uh, processing technologies. And at the same time, the amount of omega-6 fatty acids increased, and, and the amount of omega-3 fatty acids, which is found in fish and, and fish oil products, decreased. And, and this discrepancy is believed to be the root of the problem of our modern typical Western diet and how it promotes diseases. Now, obesity, coming back to pancreatic cancer, obesity certainly is one of the recognized risk factors, epidemiologic risk factors, of developing pancreatic cancer, together with other risk factors, like dietary, other dietary factors, type 2 diabetes, chronic pancreatitis, smoking, and other hereditary causes. Again, many of these risk factors are related. Obesity leads to type 2 diabetes, can worsen uh, the, the development of chronic pancreatitis. Now, the question is, what is this, uh, the association between obesity and cancer in general, and pancreatic cancer in particular? And this was a landmark study published in 2003 in the New England Journal of Medicine, which looked at the correlation between the body mass index and the death, the risk of death, of dying of a certain type of cancer. There are many types of cancers, prostate, kidney, myeloma, gallbladder, colorectal, esophagus, stomach, pancreas, and liver. And as you see in all types of cancer, there is an increased risk of dying of that type of cancer with a body mass index. For example, in the pancreas cohort, they used a body mass index from above 35, which is pretty high, and those patients had a 2.61-fold increased risk of dying of pancreatic cancer. So it, it's clear that obesity is correlated with cancer mortality. The question is, what is the mechanism underlying th that effect, uh, this effect of obesity on, on cancer development and cancer progression? This is taken from a publication in Cancer Research in 2007, and we're only going to focus on the left side of that box, not, not on the right side. So an increase in energy intake, which means basically uh, the diet we eat, together with reduced physical activity, leads to positive energy balance, which leads to obesity. Obesity can then lead to insulin resistance, leads to systemic and local inflammatory condition in your body, and to an increase in oxidative stress. So these conditions, insulin resistance, inflammation, oxidative stress, on a molecular level, they are characterized by an increased level circulating level of insulin, together with an increase in circulating levels of insulin like growth factor 1 or IGF-1. Cytokines are increased, and the cytokines secreted from the adipose tissue are also increased, which are called adipokines. Now, the insulin resistance, inflammation, and oxidative stress with the increased levels of these cytokines activate signaling pathways in the cells, like the AKT mTOR pathway, which is mentioned here, and overall, all these signaling pathways which are activated by these cytokines under these conditions are all mitogenic and proliferative. So they cause increased cell growth and proliferation. And overall, increase the risk of cancer and promote, promote cancer growth. <laughs> 